What's up YouTube? Today I've got a video that's well overdue. Today we're going to be discussing Shopify Metafields. So Shopify Metafields probably seem quite inaccessible or complex at first glance, but they're actually quite handy and easy to use once you understand a few things. But first things first, what are Shopify Metafields? Metafields in Shopify allow you to store additional information on liquid objects, which you can then output to your storefront during theme development using the Metafields object. Put in other words, Metafields are like custom fields that you can create in addition to the standard fields available on a particular object. So if we take the product object, for instance, we have fields like title, description, product images, and product type that are all available when viewing a product in the Shopify admin. Within the Shopify theme, you would access these fields via product.title, product.description, product.images, and product.type. The format here is pretty clear. You start with the name of the product, followed by a dot, followed by the name of the field. Meta fields, on the other hand, need to be namespaced within a particular object using the keyword meta fields. To access a global meta field on the product object, for instance, we would write product.metafields.global followed by another dot and then the name of the meta field. But of course the question remains, how do we actually add and update meta fields on a particular object? Well, there used to be this browser extension, it's still around actually called Shopify FD, which added a section to the edit page in your Shopify admin. But given that Shopify continually updates the admin area all the time and without much notice, extensions are the most reliable way to edit meta fields. But luckily there's a little known address that makes it easy to add your own meta fields to any object in the Shopify admin. Want to know what it is? It's your Shopify address followed by admin slash bulk question mark resource underscore name equals then the name of the resource you wish to target. Let's say the product object in this instance, then ampersand edit equals metafields.global.dot followed by the name of the meta field you want to edit. It's quite the mouthful, but you can see on the screen how it looks. Now, the beauty of this is that you don't have to take any specific steps to add a meta field, but the consequence of this is that you need to make sure that the spelling of the field that you're working on is correct each time because you can put literally whatever you want after the dot and that will form the name of the meta field after you enter the contents. You can also edit multiple meta fields at once by separating each field with the ASCII version of ampersand, which is percent sign to C like such. This little known bulk editing page in your Shopify admin is super handy when adding and editing meta fields in the Shopify admin. So now that we know how to add and edit meta fields and how to output them inside your theme, let's put this knowledge into practice. So we're going to start off this tutorial inside the usual spot, my development store, Chris testing shop. And down here, you can see I have set up a theme for today's tutorial based on the simple theme. All we're going to do is add our meta fields into the theme so that they display on the product template. What I've done also is I've created a new example product. I have created something called a Sony camera. If you know cameras, this is actually a Sony a7 III, but the model number is irrelevant for this tutorial. What I've done is I've copied across the description from the Amazon page for this product, as you can see down here about this item. But as you can see above it, we've got other attributes like brand, hardware interface, compatible mountings, exposure, control type, and optical zoom. In Shopify, we have something called vendor, so we can use vendor for brand. Uh, which is what I've done. If I switch back over here inside vendor, I've put Sony, but we don't have fields for hardware interface, compatible mountings, exposure control type, or optical zoom. But of course, what we can do is create meta fields to store this information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my store again. I'm going to bring down the window a little bit so you can see my bar here there. So I've got the Amazon page in another tab and I've got my testing shop here. 
And let's actually go to that URL we talked about at the start of the video. So I'm gonna take the start here, which is my Shopify address. Gonna paste it over here. And then I'm gonna type admin followed by slash bulk. And as you can see, I've already done this already. So it's coming up in memory, but to type it out, resource name equals product because we're editing products. And then we put in edit meta fields dot global. And the first field was called hardware interface. Make sure you separate the spaces with a underscore here, of course, the and which is going to be represented by percentage 2C. And then if I use my keyboard here to press across, you can see we've got compatible mountings here and then another percentage 2C to add another one and exposure control type. I opted not to go for the optical zoom. We only need three examples. We're just doing a proof of concept here. So let's hit that or hit enter on that. And as you can see here, we've got the entire list of products in our store with the hardware interface, compatible mountings and exposure control type fields. How good's that? All right, so we can edit in bulk. Even if we wanna do it for just one product, we kinda of have to go to this bulk editor page and just scroll down to where our product is here. So what I'm gonna do is, as you see, I've already done this. So I'm just gonna put in AV port, Sony E and automatic, which matches. So that's for hardware interface, compatible mountings and exposure control type. That matches what we have over here. And I'm just gonna hit save on that. All right, so now let's go to our theme and make that modification. I'm gonna drag this up again because we don't need to see the address anymore. And I'm gonna go into online store, which is gonna default to themes. Going to hit preview. So we've got preview in one tab. Let's go to that product. Just gonna search for it. I think it's on the final page. Here we go, Sony camera. We could also just go to the product in the admin and click view, but see me, I'm here. I just navigated across. And as you can see here, we've got our product page based on the simple theme for this Sony camera. Now, I think a good place to put these extra attributes would be right underneath these buttons. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna head back over to the theme and click edit code. Now, of course, I recommend editing code in a code editor, not online, but for the purpose of this video, just to keep it simple, I'm using the online code editor. So let's navigate into our product template. And as you can see here, the contents of the product.liquid template can be found in this section file. So let's dig deeper, go into the product-template section. And here, if we use control F, we can find those product attributes, which we talked about earlier. So product title is here in the HTML, product.images, product.type. I don't think we're using type in this theme, so it doesn't show up. Um, and product.description, you'll find won't show up on this particular theme because it's inside a snippet. So we'd have to go deeper for that, go down into the product dash description dot liquid snippet product dot description. Here you can see it shows up multiple times. All right, so back to the product template, I'm gonna find where those buttons are. I'm just gonna search for button. And here you can see product single cart, submit wrapper, add to cart. This is where our buttons are. So I'm gonna go underneath, create a new div. And inside the div, I'm gonna create another div but before I do that, I'm gonna check if the field actually exists. This is best practice to check if the field exists before you actually try and work with it. Or if the field is blank or not, was probably the better way to say it. So inside here for our first line, I'm gonna put, what was the name of it again? It was hardware interface, hard interface. And then here's where we put in our meta field. So it's gonna be product dot meta fields dot global following the exact same format as before when we did our bulk editor. So if I bring down the address bar again, you can see exact 
same as what we put here after edit equals. Heading back over here. Actually, I probably should have just copied that value, make it easier for ourselves. Hardware interface. And of course, in the if statement, I'm gonna check if that is not blank before I output it. All right, so after I do that, hit save, and let's go to that product page in that theme. As you can see, hardware interface AV port shows up. All right, so that's the proof of concept right there. Let's just do the other two fields to show you that this works, but we're gonna use the exact same format. The second field was called, I'll bring this down again for you, compatible underscore mountings. So I'm just going to switch hardware underscore interface for compatible underscore mountings, making sure to change this as well. And then the last one, which was exposure control type here, here, and then the label exposure Hit save on that. And then if we go over here, you'll see we've got our three attributes showing up. Now we can format them however we want using CSS, but that's basically Shopify meta fields in less than 10 minutes. As you can see, it's not that hard once you discover this bulk editor right here and you know exactly how to reference it in your Shopify theme. Now, one more thing I wanna show you before we wrap up is that if I go to another product, because we are doing this on the product template. So it's important to note that this code is gonna run on every product that uses that template. And because this is the standard product template, chances are this is gonna run on every product page. So we need to have those if statements in there. And that's very important because if we go to another product that doesn't have those meta fields, like say for instance, awesome sneakers, you can see those labels don't show up, which is exactly what we want, okay? We only want it showing when there's a value set for them. And currently, there's only, the value is only set on Sony camera. And you can clearly see that by going to the bulk editor and seeing that these fields are the only ones filled in. So there you have it guys, Shopify meta fields, pretty simple stuff. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments below. But I hope this video has shown you just how easy it is to add custom fields to your product pages and any other resource. Actually, now that I say any other resource, I wanna just prove that if we change products here to collection or any of the other resources that we can add meta fields to, you'll get the same thing, but for your collections or for whatever resource you're looking at. So maybe it's page. There you go. How handy is this little link right here? So copy that to your clipboard, have that ready to go, and you can add meta fields to whatever you want in your Shopify store. So that concludes today's tutorial. As you can see, Shopify meta fields aren't that tricky once you understand a few key things. If there's anything in particular you'd like me to cover next on this channel, don't be shy, leave a comment below and I might make a video on it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.